kids how are you doing this is auntie barbara hi i am so excited to be doing this i miss you all and uh, i hope you guys are being good kids to your parents you're listening to your parents you're being respectful and you're being nice and you're praying and you're always praising god and singing to god i know this is a time where by we're asking our parents questions why are we not going to school what is happening but guess what everything's gonna be all right in jesus name amen well i just decided to do this so that you guys don't miss out on listening and um actually studying the word of god and having you know you listening to this i know you all miss the bible studies that we always have in the children's department but right now i'm going to be telling you bible stories but before then before i start reading you a story from this Bible this is what we normally use and <clears throat> I'm gonna be saying a prayer we're gonna pray we're gonna sing one worship song and then we're gonna pray and then we're gonna be um, I'm gonna be reading you a story from the Bible okay let's close our eyes and let's pray in Jesus name Father Lord I thank you for today I thank you for everything that you have done I thank you for your protection I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for your deliverance upon our lives, upon our parents, upon our brothers, upon our sisters, upon our aunties, our uncles, our grandparents, our mommy and our daddy, our friends, our loved ones. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for being with us in this hard time. Jesus, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you are doing. Thank you, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, in any way we have wronged against you, in any way we have sinned against you, Lord, forgive us, forgive our parents, forgive our sisters, our brothers, our uncles, our aunties, our grandmama, our grandpapa, in any way we have wronged or sinned against you, forgive us our sins, wash us clean with your blood, and make us to be acceptable before your throne in the name of Jesus. And Father, Lord, even as we read the word, let the Holy Spirit teach us, let the holy spirit direct us help us father lord to listen and be wise to listen to your word and understand thank you jesus we call the holy spirit to come and be in our midst we call you jesus to come and be in our midst today as we study your word in jesus name we pray amen how many of you are excited i am I hope you are oh well remember before i left i was reading um telling you about moses how god called moses i hope you still remember the story but i'll just be reading and um be telling you about the story as i read i will explain and then i would you know talk to you about it so i start it says here god calls moses so moses grew up in egypt but when he was older, he ran away. He was angry that the Pharaoh was keeping the Israelites as slaves. One day, Moses saw something very strange. A bush was burning on fire, but it was not burning away. Moses heard God's voice. Moses, you must go and help my people. Go back to Egypt with your brother Aaron. Tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. You see, that's Moses. Do you see? That's the burning fire. That's it. Okay? I'm going to turn the page now. And he said here, yeah. Moses went to the Pharaoh and said, Let the people go so that they can have a feast for God in the desert. God also told Moses and Aaron, to use a walking staff to prove to the Pharaoh that he had sent them. Aaron threw the staff in front of the Pharaoh. He turned into a snake. It turned into the snake. You see? That is it. That is the staff turning into a snake. That is Pharaoh. And that is Moses. He had sent them. Arrow threw the staff in front of the pharaoh. It turned into a snake. 
the pharaoh's magicians also turned their staff into snakes no 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 i will never let the people go never shouted the pharaoh so the pharaoh was so strict he was a wicked king he never wanted to let the children of israelite go can you imagine how wicked the king would be using this god's people as slaves never wanting them to go to have their freedom to go out and live their lives the way they wanted to live their lives to serve god to worship god he didn't want them to go he kept on using them and when he says slaves he kept on using them to do things that they had labor like building buildings serving them and treating them like like if they were nothing but these israelites were children of god and god wanted pharaoh to release his people I read, God then made 10 terrible things called plagues happen in Egypt. Only the Israelites stayed safe. God showed his power so that the Pharaoh would change his mind and set the Israelites free. 1. The Nail River turned into blood. 2. Frogs hopped everywhere. 3. Clouds of biting gnats filled the air. 4. Millions of flies flew everywhere. 5. All animals became ill. Six, skin sores broke out on the Egyptians and on their animals. Seven, hailstones fell on crops. Six, skin sores broke out on the Egyptians and on their animals. Seven, hailstones fell on crops. Eight, Lucas ate all crops. Nine, darkness fell for the three days and nights. But the worst thing was yet to come. 10. The oldest child in every Egyptian family died. Wow. You see how many plagues came upon the children of, of, of the Egyptians just because the Pharaoh, this wicked king, did not want the children of Israel, the, the, the children of God, the Israelites, to go. Oh my God. See how many things happened to them in their land? This is just a short prayer saying here, Dear God, thank you for taking care of your people. You see, even in this situation, God did not allow this plague to fall on his children. He protected his children, even as things were happening in the land, bad things were happening in the land, but he kept his children. He kept his children. He saved them. You can see in this picture, you see the boys, all, see, see here, and see all the locusts, everything, and see, everybody was suffering. Everybody was suffering. But God did not allow his people to suffer. Let's turn the page. And this says, God makes a way. Let's read it. After the plague, the Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites go. He shouted, leave us alone. Moses, take your people with you and leave my country. Moses left, led the people out of Egypt. Soon after, the Israelites left Egypt. The evil Pharaoh regretted what he had done and wanted to bring them back again. Get my slaves back, he shouted and sent his soldiers after them. So what was happening now was that after the plague happened, after God sent the plague on the people of Egypt, Pharaoh could not bear the plague anymore. So he agreed to allow the Israelites go. And he shouted to Moses and told Moses, come and take your people, let them go so that the plague will stop and my people will not be troubled. He said, leave us alone, Moses, take your people and leave my country. So Moses let the people of the people, his people out of Egypt. And these people that he led were the, were the Israelites. And soon after the Israelites left Egypt, as after the Israelites were leaving um, Egypt, the evil Pharaoh regretted it. He was like, no, I don't want them to leave again. Let me bring them back. You know, he was regretting it. He was like, what he had, what he was regretting what he had done to free them. He wanted to bring them back so that they can be his slaves again. You know, so he shouted on his shoulder. He, he, soldiers he was like go and bring them back and so when the israelites left egypt 
They came to the Red Sea, but there was no way to cross it. And they had to no boats to sail across it. Behind them, the Pharaoh's army came closer and closer. Everyone was very afraid. But Moses said, don't be afraid. God will help us. We cannot do anything, but God will make a way. Oh my God, that is very powerful, kids. Can you imagine how Moses' faith was so strong? His faith was so strong that he knew that God was going to help them no matter what. Because it was God that sent him to go and free the children of Israel. Like he, God sent to said, go and free my, free my children, the Israelites, from the hands of the Egyptians. And even in this situation where they were walking away from the country, the Egyptians, and the Egyptians were running after them to bring them back. They were so scared. They were like, how are they going to escape them? How are they going to escape them? And a big red sea was in front of them. And they were confused. But you know what? Moses was not confused. He knew that God was going to make a way when there seems to be no way. And they, you heard that this is them. In the, this is them. And they were saying, God help us. God help us. God help us. They were praying, God help us. God is wonderful. Amen. And we read here. It said, then the most amazing thing happened. God sent a strong wind and it blew the water of the Red Sea. The water moved to the left and moved to the right. God used the strong wind to pack the waters and a pathway opened up so that the Israelites could walk across to dry land. When the soldiers tried to follow, the waters rolled back and crashed on them. God's people were saved. This is it. This is what happened. When the, when the Egyptians went after the Israelites, <laughs> God made a way. You know what God did? God sent a strong wind and it blew the water of the Red Sea. Imagine a big sea, but it was called the Red Sea. He blew it open and there was a pathway in the middle of the Red Sea. And, he, and Moses led the children, the Israelites, through it. And as the Israelites, you can see the sea. See how big this is? All this is water. And this is how big the sea is. And these are the children of the Israelites. Look. And then if you look in here, you see how these are the soldiers or the Egyptians and the water swallowed them and God saved his people. Look at them. Just look at this wonderful thing that God did. He made a way when there seems to be no way. God is so good. God is so good. This is the end of the story. You see, I just want to encourage you children, you know. I'm sure sometimes you hear your parents talking about what's happening in the world today but god will make a way when there seems to be no way we understand that schools are shutting down now because of the virus we understand some of our parents can't go to work because maybe their companies have been shut down because of the virus and because of this stay at home rule that the government have said they should put on ground but in all the situation that we're at home let's not forget to always thank god Let's pray to God every day and every time. Let's thank God for our parents. Let's thank God for our sisters, our brothers. Let's ask the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus to circle around our family, to circle around ourselves. God will make a way. God will see us through. He will set us free. He will be our guide. He will be our provider. He will be our protector. He will be our deliverer. He will rescue us every time we call upon him. We should always trust on God. Trust in God at every time of your life. Children, I'm so happy to share this with you. I'm so happy, uh, you know, to, to, to read to you. I'll be able to, to be able to do this with you guys. This is my first time. And I hope as we do it, it gets better. But hopefully we pray. We will always still go back to the place of worship in church. Where we can always gather together once more. I remember I always uh, used to sing this song to you guys. And the song goes like this. Jesus loves our little children. All the children of the world. There are yellow, black and white. 
there are precious in the sky. Jesus loves all little children of the world. Jesus loves all little children. Oh, the children of the world. There are yellow, black, and white. There are precious in the skies. Jesus loves all little children of the world. I love you all. Stay blessed until we see you next time. Take care. Love you all. Bye.